Auxiliary Nerve, Anatomy, Pain and Block. The axillary nerve originates from C5 and C6, mainly from the posterior cord. As you see, the posterior cord gives you the axillary and radial. So that's the axillary nerve here, and that's the radial, both coming from the posterior cord. And if you notice, the axillary nerve um, uh, go to the uh, posterior compartment through the uh, quadrangular space, which I will cover in more details in the next few slides. So this is a posterior view. Now the nerve uh, lift the quadrangular space and uh, pointing posterior in the, to the humerus and take the turn around the uh, neck of the humerus along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So um, if we look here um, uh, under the skin, the first muscle you have is the deltoid with the scapular and acromial part. I'm removing that for you. So now you see the axillary nerve with the circumflex uh, artery. And this is the uh, trapezius, lateral, and long head. Uh, this is here the teres minor, and this is here the infraspinatus. So the quadrangular space formed by the uh, teres minor, the teres major, the humerus, and the triceps muscle may, uh, mainly here the long head and it contain the axillary nerve as well as the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So in this view basically you see an overview of the course of the axillary nerve and how it branches and bifurcate as it take the turn uh, as it leave the uh, quadrilateral space and check the term. So basically you can block the nerve or treat the nerve at four different places. Here at one, it's the anterior quadrilateral space. Then at two, you have the deep subscapularis, so under the scapularis. And three, you have the deep teres minor space, which is the most common approach and the posterior quadrilateral space. So if we look at the axillary artery, how it branches, in the axilla, nothing much. Once it passes the axilla, it gives you a shoulder uh, joint uh, branch. Then once it takes the turn, uh, it branches to anterior and posterior. The posterior gives you the teres minor, uh, the anterior gives you the deltoid and, and cutaneous uh, branches. So here again uh, you see how it gives you the nerve uh, branch to the teres minor and then it takes a turn and give you articular branches, cutaneous branches and uh, deltoid muscle branch. Uh, another uh, view here so that's again the uh, quadrilateral space and the first approach, as I showed you, it's in the anterior quadrilateral space. So basically, uh, here, before it bifurcates between the subscapularis and coracoid, uh, coracobrachialis. And then you have the uh, teres minor or uh, trans teres minor underneath the teres minor. That's the most common uh, approach with hopefully uh, you catch the anterior branch and maybe the posterior branch based on where it is you are needed. So the axillary nerve um, is uh, extremely important when we talk about shoulder innervation. As you see in this illustration, um, the shoulder gets innervated by uh, the uh, 
suprascapular nerve, the axillary, uh, sorry, the lateral pectoral nerve, and the upper uh, subscapular nerve and the axillary. Uh, if you remember from my introductory lec uh, lecture in the upper extremity, uh, most of the innervation comes from the suprascapular and axillary. But you see almost all this part is coming from the axillary nerve. So it's a very common, very important nerve when you talk about uh, shoulder innervation. So axillary nerve pain or neuralgia, how it presents. First, let's uh, go over uh, potential causes of injury and indication for block and treatment. So fracture of the surgical neck of humerus make uh, perfect sense. Dislocation of the shoulder joint. Shoulder joint surgery, mainly arthroplasty. Uh, deltoid lesion and surgery. Um, once I've seen a patient with uh, lipoma, big lipoma over the deltoid, so she ended up with a big incision there and that gave her uh, axillary nerve neuralgia. Um, it's a common block, uh, as I said, for the treatment of chronic shoulder pain. So how this presents, so the motor part, basically, you get shoulder joint abduction, flexion, and extension uh, weakness, and that's mainly by the deltoid, right? The abduction mainly by the deltoid. And the sensory, as you see here, it's you, you get altered sensation or uh, pain. Uh, it can be allodynia, it can be just pain. Uh, and this distribution here over the upper outer arm. So how we block this nerve? Um, I'm going to uh, walk you over two approaches. The most common approach is the deep uh, terrace main or space. So basically, you can position the patient uh, prone or uh, semi-lateral or uh, sitting, and you start uh, placing your, your prop here at A. And at A here, um, you see the, uh, the deltoid, right? And underneath the deltoid, the uh, teres minor. You're very close to the uh, neck of the humerus. Um, but you need to see more uh, uh, teres minor, and you need to see the vessel, the circumflex uh, uh, artery. So you have to go a little bit more uh, inferior and medial. So here, uh, another view with the classic appearance of the deltoid, the teres minor, and the axillary nerve with the circumflex artery. Um, here, see how subtle movement uh, between this, the blue, and here, the red, can expose more uh, uh, teres minor, and here, if you just see here, that will be just some articular branches. So you have to go under. Remember, it's below the teres minor until you start to see the posterior circumflex humeral artery and just next to it, the axillary nerve, mainly the anterior uh, branch as you start to move uh, lateral. So if you want to do ablation, so obviously, you're going to go here with the articular branches. Make sure when you stimulate, you didn't get deltoid or any con uh, contraction. Um, and so, uh, or you go more here. I'll show another uh, picture. But if you want to just do a block or let's say do pulse radio frequency or peripheral nerve stimulator, then you want to go at the level of the auxiliary artery here. So this is, uh, again, a classic image with the circumflex, the posterior circumflex uh, humeral artery and the axillary nerve. And you can come uh, 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 
caudal to a cephalic or a cephalic to caudal. In this case, we are coming cephalic to caudal. And once you put your needle, especially again, if you are putting a, a profanar stimulator or doing pulse, uh, you can stimulate and you can appreciate the tooth contraction. Obviously, if you see that, you do not want to burn here. So you need to go more lateral and uh, superior. So the other approach is the anterior quadrilateral uh, space. Basically, you want to block it on the space. So wait, wait, wait. The, the first step, you place the probe over the posterior axillary fold, as you see here. Then you start to angulate a little bit. So in the first um, position, you will uh, see the teres major and the latissimus dorsi. So we are uh, about here. But if you go slightly more cephalic and, and you tilt until you see the, uh, the uh, until you see the subscapularis muscle here, that's the subscapularis muscle here, and you see part of the uh, coracobrachialis and the biceps muscle. So you can appreciate the nerve, the axillary nerve here, and next to it, the posterior circumflex uh, humeral artery. So you can block it here or even place a PNS, but this can be uh, more vulnerable for migration at this position. Um, again, if you want to do radiofrequency ablation, so you need to get closer to the capsule, and more lateral, and of course stimulate to make sure you don't get a deltoid um, contraction. That's what I have for you. I hope you find it uh, helpful.